Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1988 comedy drama, She's Having a Baby. Now, before I go any further sharing my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Brian for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now... She's Having a Baby is one of the more lesser known films in John Hughes's filmography. And I can understand somewhat why that's the case. It's not a film that from its concept or its uh, narrative really stands out uh, when it comes to a lot of the other films in his filmography. It feels like kind of a standard stock kind of film when it comes to its plot. You know, it's a movie about a couple who just got married and they are dealing with the various different trials and tribulations of married life and also impending uh, motherhood for a uh, uh, the wife and bringing a, a, a baby into the world and everything that comes with that and dealing with the pressure from the, from uh, various different parts of the family, trying to pressure uh, them into having kids. And then the, the responsibility of that once they do have kids and, and all of that. And it's something that is very, generic to be perfectly honest it's a very generic kind of plot but i still like this film i still thought it was pretty decent and i think in large part it's because of the fact that john hughes is he was an incredible film filmmaker he really was a fantastic uh uh director and he was one of the best directors when it comes to just injecting some genuinely unique and just compelling energy and vitality into his into his films when it comes to uh, the direction. Uh, every frame is very dynamic, very uh, uh, lively, just injected with a lot of uh, energy and creativity. Uh, he's the type of director that you loved watching him work because he just knew how to make a very compelling, very uh, genuinely intriguing looking film, but also finding a way to just really tap into some very genuine and authentic emotions. Uh, I think Hughes is honestly one of the best directors out there when it comes to directing a scene that is really set up as a montage and just getting so much emotion out of it and having the sequence fit perfectly with a, with a bit of music that just raises the sequence to an even higher level. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of almost kind of like a silent movie sort of thing because he's able to tap into that sort of uh, talent behind the camera to to show these emotions without really any lines of dialogue most of the time when it comes to a lot of these sequences. So I can see why he's or he was very proud of this film, and he should be from a directorial standpoint. He absolutely should be very uh, proud of, of what he um, ultimately brought to the table with this film and what he was able to conceive visually. Now, the screenplay, which is also by John Hughes, that's where things don't quite, uh, let's just say, deliver the goods on a consistent level. I understand why the narration of uh, Briggs, um, Kevin Bacon's character, is present in the story. 
it's all a big setup for the reveal at the end that the book that he's writing is she's having a baby and the narration are excerpts from his book. But that's something that you honestly do see coming. So it's not really that surprising. And at the same time, there were a lot of moments in the film where the narration to me was just a little tacked on. It didn't really add much to the scene. And I've honestly been that kind of person anyway. I prefer my films to have very minimal narration when it comes to somebody narrating things that are happening to them at that point in time in their lives. If they're reminiscing about the past, that's one thing. But when they're doing the whole sort of thing where, oh, they're talking about what's happening now and they're doing it in a narrating style... I am not really uh, uh, that big of a fan of it. I think it's kind of distracting when it comes to really immersing yourself into uh, the film because the film stops for this character to narrate and say an excerpt from his book and then move on to another scene. That's why the film has this very kind of... um, I wouldn't say awkward, but definitely very... uh, uh, I, I don't really want to say janky either because I think that's too harsh, but it's it has a very jumbled kind of structure, which at times works because it makes it a very unorthodox kind of story that has some really surprising uh, moments of dark humor or cutaway gags that are definitely... Uh, quite something else and definitely not something that you'll see coming. And those I would say probably provide the biggest laughs in the movie other than some of the moments where they are really just pointing out the absurdity of uh, a lot of things that come with uh, marriage and motherhood or the pressure of uh, other family members trying to uh, get their grandchildren. And so as that is definitely something that I think works when it comes to the script. And there are moments where the romance and the relationship between uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Briggs actually is very effective but those moments are really reserved for the ending of the film where you have this montage sequence which honestly i would say is probably the best scene in the entire movie and it's this sequence where um briggs uh jefferson briggs he's in the hospital and He's just been made aware that his wife is having a breached labor, which means that things are very precarious and they have to act fast. Otherwise, both the mother and the baby could potentially die. And so he's distraught emotionally in the waiting room and he's just reminiscing about the good times that he had uh, with his wife. And the sequence is just wonderfully uh, uh, set to uh, a Kate Bush song called uh, This Woman's Work that John Hughes specifically uh, uh, asked Kate Bush to create for this montage, for this sequence. And the results are extraordinary. They really are. And in that sequence, you see these flashbacks, these moments where... Jefferson and uh, Christy are are just enamored with one another and they're just genuinely in love. And a good chunk of the movie shows them either at odds with one another or distant or not necessarily knowing how to make uh, the other one happy. And they say things like they care about one another and they love each other. And there's a couple moments where you can see a little bit of that, but it's not very common. And so it just makes the relationship between the two seem very strained. And it gives this weird vibe that 
the baby is really the main reason why they ultimately uh, stay together, which I guess that's kind of how it is in some relationships. But it, it just, to me, it, it, it really wasn't necessarily something that was that effective when it comes to the script. What was, though, was this, that the scenes during the montage at the end, some very effective, uh, poignant emotions and just showcases of uh, a couple's love for one another. It was very sweet and very authentic and genuine and, and charming and really tugged at the heartstrings. And I felt that that could have been an even stronger finale for the film if you saw little snippets or little bits of that love that uh, uh, Jefferson and Christie had for one another throughout the film. Not necessarily to the same extent as the montage, but maybe a little bit more than what you were given leading up to that. Because you have a lot of moments in the film where it seems like Jefferson would rather think about sleeping around with this mystery girl at, at the club and he even dreams about her uh, or you have the whole scene at the advertising company where he's doing a photo shoot for diapers and there's this whole extended sequence of him running around with this baby and and you and getting looks at the hot models that are going in for other photo shoots in the same uh, uh, building. And when that's all going on, it's almost like, okay, does he really love his wife? Does he really want to be with her? Does Is this really something that he wants to do? Or does he want to be more like his uh, selfish uh, friend, Davis, who is all about getting laid? And all about having fun and and so on. And I think what the script is trying to do is balance the two things. Uh, but it doesn't really necessarily work. It's one of those things where it, it, it really could have been stronger if there's just a better balance to me. And I just felt like the, a lot of the approach to... The relationship between Jefferson and his, wife and his wife was more unbalanced than than anything else. It really only got any balance at the end of the movie, during the sequence featuring this woman woman's work by uh, Kate Bush. But what I did really appreciate about the film, though, is a very different approach to this kind of story. Because a lot of the time when he comes, when you see a story like this that deals with a couple and the the wife gets pregnant, a lot of it is from the perspective of the wife, and that's understandable. But here it's from the perspective of the husband, and I think that's different. That really does add a nice, unique, uh, intriguing spin on uh, this tired and, and true uh, concept dealing with conception. And there are some other things about it that I think are kind of clunky. Just how easily Kevin Bacon's character, Jefferson, gets his advertising job just because he was very creative and lying on his resume. They give him a job. Uh, that, that just felt really something that was just straight out of fantasy land. And for a movie that has a lot of cutaway scenes that are either something straight out of like a nightmare when he first gets the news, uh, 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 that, that she's pregnant or some of the other really surreal sequences, like the sequence with the whole dance number involving lawnmowers. Um, it's one of those things where all of that fits more in line with things than him just getting this job because he was a good liar. He was a creative liar. 
also that really did make it seem like his his strife his struggles really weren't that much and that really made the focus on him kind of boring at times because it didn't really feel like his struggle was really that interesting and there there wasn't really an equal focus on Christy and her her uh, uh struggle other than her feeling pressured to get pregnant and have a baby and a few other pressures involving her trying to make her man happy and so on but they didn't really uh as in they i mean john hughes didn't really expand upon that her and what she's dealing with that much and i think honestly he could have really fleshed her out more and 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 balance things out when it comes to to uh the couple and and their individual uh struggles it seemed like she was put on the back burner and there were a lot of moments where it would focus more on like her her parents and their uh own uh issues or um struggles with connecting with Jefferson or trying to uh, um, get the message across to their daughter that they want a grand grandkid, but they don't want to uh, pressure her into it and make her feel like she's you know, got a gun to her head and it's one of those things where she's got to do it now and can't wait. And it just has a lot of things that just feel very jumbled together when it comes to uh, the narrative and the script, even the stuff with Davis, uh, the, the uh, friend of Jefferson who is this selfish womanizing uh, character who is just thinking that Jefferson is drowning in this marriage. And the best thing for Jefferson is to get a divorce or to get out of the, this situation so they can hang out and be best buds again and get drunk and, and uh, bang women. And the script definitely paints this character as someone that is very flawed and it, it shows that what he necessarily wants in life does not align with Jefferson's desires or uh, his wife's who is also a friend of, of, of Davis's, but the dynamic between Davis and, and, and the two uh, the the couple is honestly one of the more interesting dynamics in the film, and I think that could have been expanded upon more, too. But at the end of the day, it really is more about Jefferson and his fears and uh, internal uh, issues and. Uh, moments of grappling with uh, adulthood and um, living up to the uh, social uh, structure or uh, setup for a man his age or a husband as well as some of the stuff involving uh, uh, Kirsty and, and her whole connection and involvement with, with everything. And I think it does ultimately pay off at the end with the, uh, this woman's work scene and the ending of the movie. But even like the end of the film, like it's very somber in some ways, you know, with that song and with the montage and kind of left up in the air to like, oh, my, did she not make it? Did the baby make it? But she didn't make it. 
But at the end of the film, they both make it. They're both fine. But it doesn't really seem like there's a guarantee that they're going to live happily ever after. Things are kind of left open-ended. And then the end credits happen, and it's a bunch of movie stars just naming off silly baby names. Uh, like Bill Murray and Michael Keaton and John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and and just a, a, an unbelievable smorgasbord of stars, including some some sports stars at the time, like Magic Johnson. And it was definitely entertaining, but it just felt like it was such a massive just shift in tone compared to how things ended with the film where things were sweet and, and and definitely did seem like things were going in the right direction with these two, but there were still a, a, some, some sense that maybe a baby isn't going to fix all of all, all of their, their issues. And it's a very realistic take on things. And I, and I really did appreciate that. But yeah, the ending also does kind of uh, match some of the moments in, in the script that I wasn't really a fan of. Uh, I don't really like the inconsistency when it comes to the tone of the film. Some of the cutaway scenes work and I think they fit, especially the darker or more edgier uh, bits. But the whole uh, lawnmower dance parade like that scene did not fit at all and i thought it was honestly pretty jarring and there's a couple other moments like that so yeah it's one of those films where i've seen critics say that it doesn't know what it wants to be and i do really kind of agree with that to a point i think what it's trying to do is build everything up to the ending of the movie where the narration is all a setup for the book. She's having a baby by Jefferson and most of the film is from his point of view and it's dealing with everything that's going on in his head involving this, this marriage and, and having a kid and That works to a point, but it's just one of those things where if, if that was, if this is the way that the book was, it would be kind of a hard read because it would just be hard to really get that invested in things because it's really taking itself seriously with some very serious drama. And then it's taken a left turn into just almost not a sort of Looney Tune land, but there are a couple scenes that are almost straight out of a Wiley E. Coyote cartoon. So honestly, it kind of does. So it's just one of those things where it, it, it does have a bit of tonal whiplash. And, but I do feel that it's trying to culminate to that moment of realization that Jefferson has in the hospital room where he realizes how much Kirsty really means to him. And how much this kid means to him. And that more than anything in this world, at this very moment, he wants them both to make it out of this really just harrowing situation alive. And he wants to be there for both of them. And that that whole moment is the the final evolution of Jefferson as a character. And I think that's what John Hughes is trying to go for. And I think there is something to be said about that in terms of how it's kind of effective, but because of some of the other stuff, it's just not as effective as it could be. So it is, it's just one of those things where it's like, I see what he's trying to do here, but He's also trying to do a lot of other stuff, and I, I think either he should have, like I said earlier, fleshed out some of these other characters and subplots a little bit more, uh, focus a little bit less on the whole 
parents and and the their whole thing with uh their kids and and, and definitely kind of shied away from the stuff with Kevin Bacon and his advertising job because some of that is fine, but it really wasn't anything that I wanted to see that much of compared to fun or just charming scenes between uh, uh, Jefferson and, and Christy or various different sort of character building moments between those two characters or stuff involving Davis. That, that those those were all more interesting uh, bits of the plot that, to me than the the business stuff, but still still a good enough script. But almost one of those things where maybe John could have used another writer, maybe a female voice might have been interesting to bring in there. John collaborate with another female writer. She could write a lot of the stuff that involves uh, Elizabeth McGovern's character, so you can get that perspective and have it. Uh, feel a little more authentic and maybe less distant and then John can focus on the whole uh, um, perspective of Jefferson and, and, and all of that but you know it's John Hughes so he just, just wanted to do it himself and he had proven that he could do that and be very capable of that and, and a lot of films prior I think also this is one of those things where John Hughes is burning the candle at both ends of this movie at the time of this film's release, and I think that also definitely did come across. I mean, he did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Great Outdoors, and like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, like all around in the same time, and then was also doing this movie because there's a whole scene in this film where during the whole baby name thing in the credits, you have you have Ferris in the credits, listen off some baby names. Like it's that, like he's like, he recorded some lines during the sequence that was shown in the end credits and Ferris Bueller's day off where he's like, Hey, what are you still doing here? So it's one of those things where it's like, did he just get Ferris? Did he just get Matthew Broderick to just do that stuff? Or did he do it around the same time that he was shooting that film? And I really don't know what, what, the 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 truth is there because i know that he shot the stuff with john candy and dan Aykroyd when he was shooting the great outdoors but the cast is also one of those things where it's kind of a mixed bag for me uh kevin bacon i thought was great i honestly feel this is one of his better uh performances um really liked how he handled a lot of different uh, aspects of his character. He handled the reluctance when it comes to really just committing to the marriage and committing to everything that comes with it. Or He handled uh, the humility of not being able to uh, initially get his wife pregnant on the first go and dealing with the fact that he has to work a little bit harder and do things a little bit differently in order to make things uh, uh, work. And also a lot of the other conflicts with him in terms of the scenes where he's talking with his friend Davis and he's reminiscing and thinking about the good times that he used to have and, and that he's not really going to be able to do that stuff as much anymore. But there's a part of him that does want to keep doing that but he has genuinely grown to care and love his wife so much to the point that he doesn't want to let that go. He doesn't want to uh, uh, burn that bridge just so we can live in the past. And it's a, it's a very uh, uh, dynamic, very layered, very strong performance. There's some great bits of comedy too from him in this as well as a dramatic uh, uh emotional uh acting um Elizabeth, Elizabeth McGovern though here's the thing i think having her have a midwestern accent that comes and goes was a mistake i don't know if that was her idea or john's whoever thought thought of that should have nipped that in the bud from the beginning because it is something that 
it doesn't come across as authentic and it makes her character feel even more distant as a result than she already is because she's kind of a paper thin character and then you have her talking in this accent that sounds fake and it just kind of takes you out of the scenes that she's in and i think there are there are moments where her and kevin are a really good couple like the scenes in the montage but you don't see a lot of that throughout the rest of the movie so the scenes that you see the two in they're kind of they're bickering they're 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 not really happy with one another and it just makes it feel like they don't have any chemistry and i don't necessarily know whether or not that's a elizabeth mcgovern thing or if that's a john hughes and the script thing or a bit of both but as it is like mcgovern's fine but she's nothing great and she's definitely not on the same level as kevin bacon and for a film like this i definitely do feel that a stronger co-star and a much more consistent performance really would have helped this movie. Um, Alec Baldwin, I, I swear to God, he was just coked out of his mind doing this film. It really does ap appear that it's one of those performances where the actor is just taking method acting a bit too far because he's supposed to be playing a burnout. But it's a good performance. It really is. I would say it, it's, a, it's a really good performance by by Alec Baldwin as Davis and you could see why he might be able to ma manipulate some people into taking a side uh because he's, he's definitely very charismatic um you have James Ray who plays Jake's father Holland Taylor who plays Jake's mother Willem Wyndham who uh, w uh Will William Wyndham who plays Russ Cr Christie's father he was he was a total hard ass in this but he was Honestly, pretty hilarious. I would say he's one of the funniest characters in the entire movie. Uh, Catherine Damon plays uh, Gail Christie's mother. You have John Ashton from Beverly Hills Cop as Ken, this uh, neighbor in the neighborhood. And he only is in the film for a little bit, but he steals this the show and every scene that he's in. Like, he's really funny. Um, the The whole dancing lawnmowers sequence was pretty daft but i got a chuckle out of john ashton doing a doing a dance number um dennis dugan is also in this as one of the business uh, guys so is paul gleason plays the guy who hires jake uh paul gleason you might recognize he was the principal in in the breakfast club and a bunch of other um uh, roles he was also in die hard eddie mcclurg is in this as one of the uh uh wives in the neighborhood she was the clerk in planes trains and automobiles who told steve martin that he's fucked because he doesn't have a receipt or doesn't have the the ticket anymore um but yeah it's one of those things where it's got a decent enough cast but it's kind of a mixed bag mainly because of elizabeth mcgovern she kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and I, I just, it, it's too bad. I don't think she's terrible, but she just doesn't really, let's just say have like an immediate, just positive impact when it comes to her character. She's not iconic, like Ali Sheedy in the breakfast club or, or Molly Ringwald in pretty in pink. Like you don't, she's not really on that same level. And I, I don't really feel that Elizabeth, Elizabeth McGovern really had that kind of charisma either. So I think that also didn't really help. The film has some decent cinematography by Donald Peterman. Um, but it's a kind of film visually that is not going to have some absolutely just awe-inspiring uh, visuals or cinematography but for the kind of film that it is it looks good enough the editing by alan heim i really liked i thought the editing in the film was very quirky and i think it really did help the film stand out and i was honestly waiting to see what next uh quirky or really uh uh intriguing edit that alan was going to come up with because there's just some really great transitions in this 
uh, the whole uh, sequence in the hospital with the this woman's work song. I love the shot where Kevin Bacon's character is, is crying and his tear fall, a tear, a single tear falls down his cheek and then it falls to the ground. And there's a quick cut that shows like a drop of blood that falls from his wife's body onto the, the floor of the operating table. I thought that was a really great transition. And there's a couple other transitions like that that are just really impressive. And I got to give the editor a lot of credit for that. The music by Stuart Copeland is solid, but not anything really that special. I would say the soundtrack is definitely something that stands out a lot more, especially the film's major uh, uh, um, track, uh, uh, This Woman's Work by Kate Bush. But has some other good songs like Apron Strings by Everything But The Girl, which plays during the montage of uh, uh, Kirsty and her uh, getting pregnant and, you know, going through the nine months of a pregnancy. Uh, Crazy Love by Brian Ferry. Um, the She's Having a Baby song by Dave Wakeling, the title, the title track. I'm not as big a fan of it's like goofy and like a little too on the nose, but yeah, it, it's still a, a pretty, pretty good soundtrack. The film has like a 106 minute running time. And there are a couple moments where it kind of drags a little bit, it kind of stumbles, but not, not too many moments where it's going to really bore you or, or really make it. So you want to shut it off. And it, for whatever reason, just didn't do well when it came out. Like it cost 20 million and only made 16 and critics are very mixed on. I think it's like a 41% Ron tomatoes. And I don't think it's that bad of a film by any means, but it is kind of a mid tier John Hughes movie, but a mid tier John Hughes movie is still above average and better than a lot of other comedy dramas out there. But anyway, that's uh, my thoughts on the film and as always, until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.